Hi there, it's Cuddly Wombat. After a very long time, this is my video walkthrough for a game called Evil Tonight. I've made a no commentary version that I uploaded earlier. Uh, this video is for those who prefer to have their walkthroughs with a little bit of commentary. I've lowered the music volume down just a little bit, just so that you can hear the commentary. I've played this game a lot, and I think while it's really fun and it's interesting, some of the puzzles and the enemies can be a bit much. And I've played through this game enough times that I've gone through all the challenges, gotten all the Steam achievements, and I know this game, I'd say, decently well. So I know how to bring you through the puzzles and fight the enemies. I'll still probably make a few mistakes here and there because this is a Let's Play version of a walkthrough, but regardless, we'll go ahead. There are four difficulties here. I'm going to do a balanced walkthrough. Not too easy that you guys think will I'll, I've cheesed it, but not too difficult that it's not gonna take a long time. I'm also going to skip a lot of the cutscenes because it's just for time purposes, and if you want to watch it, you can view it in your own time. So the beginning still has a few items that are worth collecting. Don't forget to always push through, push any object that seems to have skid marks, because they can contain items. If you're noting that my ammunition amounts are different than what you expect, you've probably been playing on assisted. On hardcore, they're even less. Balanced is pretty reasonable in terms of am ammunition. Now, I'm not going to use any save points as part of this walkthrough. I didn't do it in the no commentary version, and I won't do it here. Uh, that chest is actually a reward for beating the game on hardcore. I'm not going to open it because it's just going to make the game significantly easy. Now, as I know this game pretty well, I am going to somewhat speed through some of the sections, but I will be talking and commenting on a few important things. One of the most important is a diary entry. I'm not going to spend too much time on the diary entry itself, but you need to find all the diary entries, and there are 12 of them in the game. If you don't have all the diary entries, uh, this game only has one ending. You will not be allowed to complete the game without all 12 entries, and that's very important. The game also has 20 figurines. Uh, they don't really do anything, but they will provide... Uh, they serve as the game's collectibles, shall we say. And if you can get all 20, you will get an achievement. Now, I already know what doors are locked and what is needed to open a set door, but if you ever are stuck, you can always open a locked door to get a visual indicator of what key or what item would be needed to open set door. Uh, the early game is quite nice. I'm switching to manual because it's much easier. A lot of the game uh, enemies in the early game can be defeated with just your knife if you're willing to spend a little bit of time. There's quite a lot of ammunition on balance, and on hardcore you're probably making a, a few more calculated decisions. But in almost every situation, your knife can take down enemies. There are some enemies where this is not recommended, uh, but they haven't come up yet. So far, I've just taken down the Mandragoras, it's what I'm going to call the plant enemies, and those one-eyed flying monsters. They can be taken down with your knife pretty easily. Always keep an eye on your stamina. You are very open when you do not have stamina. This potted plant up here. 
we just decided to get an apple. Now be careful when you approach, because there will be two Mandragoras who will ambush you as you're trying to complete this puzzle. And since you will move, it's always better to just kill them first, and then solve the puzzle. Before we do that, there's a figurine in the upper left corner. So that brings us to a total of two. Now this puzzle is actually pretty simple, but as I mentioned in the no commentary version of this video, the puzzles change every time, so you're never going to see, or you're rarely going to see a puzzle that is the exact same as the one that you're currently tackling. But this one's pretty simple. Try to match the shape that you're, of the pedestal with the indent on the ground. So moon shape, moon indent. Circle. Sphere shape, sphere indent, and so on and so forth. You may have to get creative with the movements. Pushing different shapes aside, sometimes rotating their positions around. I can't tell you because the solution's different. So solving this puzzle will get us the student's residence key. And that will be essential for leaving this place. Now, enemies don't respawn in this game. But, new enemies will appear when you've completed objectives or are actually getting closer to a goal. A good way to tell you if you're on the right track, enemies have reappeared. And the reason I'm taking out enemies now is it, it might seem like a really big waste of time and I'm taking a long time with the knife is because it saves ammunition and because you will often be revisiting areas. You don't want to constantly tackle or deal with enemies, especially if you're doing it on a time uh, on a speed run where enemies can often build up over time if you don't deal with them. You also want to be very careful with how close you get to an enemy, because if you're too close, even while you're attacking with the knife, if you run into an enemy, you just take damage. Now, I know you've noticed that we've just gotten a lot of crossbow bolts, but no crossbow. You will have to find the weapons as they're scattered across the game, but fortunately the crossbow, like the unlike the pistol, is very found very early on. The pistol is just your standard weapon given to you at all times. So from the second room, just head to the upper right corner. Take care of this one eyed monster first. crossbow is found in this chest. And you can switch your weapons at any time, in any direction. It's highly recommended you still use your knife, at least for the first half of the game. It might be slow, but it really gets the job done. And it saves ammunition for the more difficult fights or more difficult situations. Now this doll in the upper left corner doesn't seem to have anything at first, but there's some handgun ammunition. Now, as I leave, as proof that I've just gotten this weapon, I will get ambushed. It's not a big deal. You'll hear the music play whenever uh, something happens or something unexpected happens. But really, it's no big deal for now. now if you're looking for a little bit more, a few more items. You can see the skid marks for this small table. 
push it to find some handgun ammunition. Well, I still have some space. Just grab a tonic, which is a better healing item. But again, I don't really want to be using my healing items right now. Now we'll just head to this room. Now, if you've grabbed the student's residence key early on, you are going to see that doll in the lower right corner. If you haven't grabbed the key, that doll is not going to appear, but you can't leave this place without it. So I'm just going to approach, and I'm going to get into a fight. Now normally, this uh, maid-wielding knife, a knife-wielding maid, sorry, is a really dangerous enemy that you want to take down with ammunition. But if you want to save early on, you can use the small table and two chairs to put a bit of distance between yourself and the maid while you attack with the knife from a safe distance. You want to be a bit careful though, because if you get out of position, as you've just saw, the maid can reposition itself and charge at you. Now the maid will deal more damage than any other enemy you've fought thus far, and is not someone you really want to... Uh, as you see, it's a lot of damage. And that's what happens when you don't reposition properly around the table. I didn't really want to get hurt, but that's, I guess, part of the learning process. Now there's going to be a third figurine right here. And now let's chase after the boy. I'm gonna skip that. The boy, the boy is fine. If you if you've played the beginning of the game, you know that he'll be okay. Uh, this is it's a bit of a foregone conclusion. Now I'm not gonna cover the puzzle in this room yet because we can't address it, but I can grab the fourth figurine, that's number four, and some ammunition in this room. Door's locked. And you again, you're at the student's residence. That's where the key comes in. If you didn't have the key earlier, not only would you not see the maid, but you wouldn't be able to get out in the first place. So this leads to the, to the garden. And this will connect many of the buildings together. You will be back here a few times, so clearing the enemies and searching it from top to bottom is never a bad idea. Just cautious because... So that's what happens when you run out of stamina. It doesn't look so bad in balanced. Uh, or assisted, really. Casual. But in Hardcore and Commando, it's almost life and death. So that's going to be our fifth figurine. That upper corner. And I'm going to take care of this monster. Now these guys are not deadly on their own. It's when you try to dodge other enemies while they're there that they start to become a pain and really start making you take more damage than you'd like. Unbalanced, you want a pretty good ratio of about three to four attacks before you retreat with your knife. For hardcore, it's even less. You can only do about a maximum of three before you run out of stamina. And while I do it a few times in this game, you don't want to get into a situation where you're fighting more than one enemy with your knife. It's not that it's not possible, but getting hurt becomes a lot easier when it happens. 
I can't actually complete this area just yet, but again, there's no harm in clearing it out beforehand because I'm just going to have to deal with more enemies later if I leave it alone. Fortunately for this game, enemies can't get you through a gate, but you can. This is these figures and the squares on the statues, they're going to be relevant later, but not now. Always pace to be cautious when you're fighting these creatures. And always taking your time. Another reason why it's good to take your time, just as what happened there, I dash away when something unexpected jumps out and I have the stamina to turn around and fight. Now it looks like I'm spending a lot of time on these monsters that aren't going to be much of a threat. But the important part is, is that they're not going to bother me later when stronger enemies show up. Because if you don't take care of enemies, they just linger. They just stay around. I can't go to any of these areas just yet except this place in the south. Now this room is actually one of the safest in the game. There will be no enemies that show up and there are actually quite a few goodies in here. So whenever you're in this square or this, shall I say, uh, entrance hall, nothing bad's gonna happen to you. I can search this jar to find a little few handgun bullets. I can climb up the stairs and push this chair. Find another figurine that brings us to six. I can also enter. Oh, I'll climb up the stairs first. Push that table and get some ammunition. Now enter this room on the right on the first floor. This is a save room. I'm not going to save because I actually don't need to. Now the room on the left is also very important. Because there's another diary entry. Now I did say there were no enemies. And technically there aren't. Uh, but if you approach that treasure chest, you'll notice it's not glowing. Or it doesn't have a blue shine to it like a regular item. That's because it's, it's an enemy. It's a mimic treasure chest. a mimic enemy where it's imitating a treasure chest uh, they'll go back to normal if you leave a room just to show you how it works but really there's almost nothing of value value other than that diary entry in that room and you don't need to kill all enemies this is a, a still a survival horror game at its heart and if i don't have to fight an enemy i won't this is where you meet the villain but Again, I'm not doing cutscenes because I'm trying to save time. Be careful, because you now have another enemy in this room, which are dolls. Now, they're not bad, but they can be somewhat unpredictable. Thankfully, they're not very strong. Make sure I have my 
handgun ready for this room. Because in here, I'm going to need... I'm going to have to solve a puzzle. And I'm going to have to deal with three maids at once. And normally, I might do a knife shenanigan here. And just like and hide behind the chairs and knife away. That would take way too long. And I do need what's in this puzzle. I'll just take a figurine. That brings us to seven. Take an apple. Apples are really good lifesavers. Take some ammunition here. I'll make up for some that I'm losing. I notice that the maids are quite passive, but once you hear them make a noise, like that, they found you, ow, and have locked off. You really don't want to be in their crossfire. Search this little bear. Twice. Crossbow bolts. Now that chest is also another mimic, and just to make things easier on myself, I'm not going to trigger it. Uh, I am going to eat an apple, though, because I feel a little bit in danger. This chest has a combination, and you need six nu uh, six numbers. Now, you'll find six slips of paper around the, uh, the room, dressing room, I should say. And you might think, well, I could just try these six different combinations. But what you actually want is, if you can see that the one on the very left is a little bit lighter than the other than the other numbers. That's the number you want for the combination. So in this case, this would be a one that goes here. So I would need to find the light, the that the other numbers with that same light color of tone for the on the other sheets of paper. Now, they're not necessarily in order like this. And they can usually be scattered around the room. So there's no guarantee that you'll even get the same number. I have to say, this is remarkably similar to when I first actually did this on the no commentary playthrough. I wonder if things have been more standardized. Previously, they would all change. But as you saw earlier, that's very it's very rare for something like that to happen. Four. Yep. So that was the combination of numbers I had. This gives us a very important item, the key of coins. Some doors well as you saw earlier, some doors have certain drawings on them to indicate Oop, I need to take care of that little doll first. So I can't open a door because I need it, a key that has a coin on it. Luckily, I do. The reason I went here first because there's a very tricky enemy in here, and that's a jack-in-the-box. They're not really that bad, but they have a powerful attack and they can chase you. And they're only vulnerable when the jack-in-the-box has come out. Otherwise, you can just only swing them back. Yeah, that's what happens when you run out of stamina and you're not paying attention. I did say I was going to make some mistakes. Now, I'm going to push this shelf aside. And that room, this room actually doesn't have anything useful yet. You'll hear a noise. But I can't get to that noise right now because I don't have the head. Now, I have my knife ready. And if you can see a little transparent figure, that's a ghost. 
Uh, just like the maids, they'll just relentlessly charge towards you, but they're not nearly as strong. Biggest problem is that they're harder to see. Now, there's actually two of them in this room, but I'm just grabbing another figurine, which brings us to eight. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with taking your time in this game. The biggest, one of the biggest mistakes is that you rush through and you take a lot of damage or get hit by attacks you could easily avoid. Don't be afraid to take your time. One of the prizes of this room is a slide, and I'll show you where that comes in handy later. But for now... Okay, I'm gonna deal with the, sec the last doll in this room. And get some crossbow bolts here. Now there you have this creepy little doll on uh, sitting on the shelf, but you can see some skid marks on the right. So push that. Get this me. Some hand bullets. Some door. There's another coin. Some tonic. Don't worry, this isn't the scariest thing in the game. And now, that hook is a very important item that I'll need later. But once I grab it, enemies will appear. Okay, two dolls will have appeared. Now, normally I wouldn't deal with them and I'd leave. But I don't want anything hurting me because I have already kind of stupidly taken some attacks from the knife maids. And they hurt. Now, I've taken out the dolls, but they're not the biggest threat. A uh, knife-wielding maid has appeared at the bottom. And you really do not want to anger her. I need to bait her out. There we go. Dodge, dodge. Now, the good news is that enemies can't follow you out of the room. So I can leave her. I don't need to defeat her. Let's get to the second floor. Ghost will come out. No, I can ignore that doll for the time being. It won't come over just yet. When an enemy has noticed you, that's when it starts to move over to you. But sometimes you can get away with not with them not noticing you, and then you can take them out one at a time. Now from this, from that the stairs, I'm gonna to head to the right and enter this room right away. It's because it's a safe room in here. Also an apple. This will be quite useful later. I'm also going to go into this room and deal with these of uh, Floating enemies. They shoot uh, orbs of energy at you, and when you hit them, they'll explode in and launch more orbs of energy. These orbs can be uh, deflected with a physical attack, from especially your knife, which makes them easy enemies to take out, and no matter the difficulty, they're just taken out with one swipe of your knife. I can't solve the puzzle in this room just yet, but just, again, clearing the enemies in here makes things significantly easier. That chest is a mimic. I'm not going to touch it. So there's another ghost floating down here. I'm going to take care of it. See the skid marks on this urn. Push it away. And that brings us to nine figurines. 
Even though there are crates, there's nothing if you break them. And I don't know if you can see the outline of that ghost, but once you go up this way, it will try to haunt you. Now, other than the room I entered in with all the pictures and the puzzle I couldn't fix yet, all the other doors are locked, and I can't get through them because I don't have the key. This is the exception, though. I'm just unlocking a door from the other side, which brings me back into the entrance hall. So that's a handy shortcut, so I don't have to keep going through the first floor back through the second, as that's a big pain. Now I'm going to go into the left side. Again, that was that's the sound of a ghost. Always be very careful when you hear it. You never know what's around the corner. You can see some skit marks on this globe. Push it away. Now that fire is raging, but I can't get hurt by touching it. Now, sometimes when you inspect items, uh, you'll just get a, a pointless comment, but some, like this locker, have ammunition. You just need to search them possibly a second time for that search to trigger. And normally I wouldn't need to kill this ghost, but unfortunately it saw me. And then it will just end up taking a different position and inconveniencing me later. It's just starting a really nice apple. Now I can't go up these stairs. But that's not what I need to do right now. I really want to get rid of this ghost. Because I will have to come back here more than once. This crate doesn't have anything, but you can see the skid marks. Who doesn't have anything, but it's got a couple of goodies. Got some bullets, some crossbow bolts, and an apple. The slide projector isn't going to play anything right now because it doesn't have any slides. Now, this doesn't make any sense right now. There are actually three slides in this game, and once I have all these three slides, it'll start to make more sense. But now that I have the key of coins, I can start going back to areas that I previously couldn't explore. This is actually a shortcut from the, le from the left side of the entrance hole back out into this garden. Now you, as you can see from enemies reappearing, this means that this area has now gained significance. But, if I had to deal with all the enemies that I didn't kill before, I'd have to do a lot more artful dodging that I really don't want to do right now. So, as annoying and wimpy as it seems, I am going to take care of these enemies. Now, the position of these dancers is important because... They're going to be relevant to the upcoming puzzle. I'm actually going to take a picture of these on my phone. So I have a reference. Because I really don't want to keep going outside and looking at this puzzle. Now if you're playing on Commando, for example... Uh, well, actually, 
more on that later. So I, I need a coin key to open the door. That's why I didn't go here earlier. It would have been rather pointless without a key. Now, it looks quiet, but there's an enemy. Now, there's also going to be a mimic here, but I'm going to be a bit smart about it. I just need to push this out of the way. Grab a figurine. That gives us 10. I'm going to grab the apple. The handgun bullets. Crossbow bolts. And leave. Now, if you're playing on commando difficulty, and one of the reasons why I, I paused my thoughts was... You don't want to keep switching areas because on commando difficulty, there are enemies around every corner. And there's no point defeating all of them either. As you can see, entering and exiting the room has reset the mimic, so I don't have to deal with it anymore. So this puzzle requires me to get... The, the figures of the ballerinas I saw out the ball the dancing statues outside and get them in the correct order the order was the small squares that you might have seen in the beginning taking a picture writing things down they it really does help don't be afraid to do it I do it all the time when I'm playing this game Especially in hardcore when I'm rushing through enemies and I don't want to fight. And from that I get a garden key. Now the garden's going to be a very tricky part, which is why I'm actually going to deal with that right now. Other people might have decided to take a different approach to the solutions, and thankfully when it comes to Evil Tonight, there's no real wrong answer on what you should do first, as long as you actually do it. So this door is locked, I need the garden key. And for those of you who are wondering, why not the top top door? It's latched on the other side. That's where the garden key comes in. Now I'm gonna trigger this Manjagora enemy, which unfortunately is the easiest thing about this puzzle. And you might have seen that enemy just that plant enemy just now. Sometimes vines will shoot up, but that's not really the biggest problem. So the biggest problem about ow, biggest problem about that charging enemy is that it deals a lot of damage. It's basically a stronger maid. But fortunately, there's another figurine. I just have to push this part to the side. Oh jeez. Go away, go away, go away. That brings me to 11. Some handgun ammunition. That's why it's good to take your time, because this is going to hurt you. These vines can hurt if you run through and against an enemy that will charge at you. I'll just show you what I mean. Like that. And deal a lot of damage, you really don't want anything to stop your escape. Because I'm just going to trigger that enemy because there's a Manjagora. And I want that shotgun ammunition to help. But I want that enemy to be the only enemy I'm worrying about. No vines. Like that. 
shoot. Yeah, that's why you really don't want him turning. I sure hope I'm playing smarter than this in the future. Yeah. The way forward is with these four statues. You want to find the statue. You need to light. make sure that all four remain lit. Uh, if you get the correct one, the flame remains on, and then you just have to trigger the other three in a specific order. If you get it wrong, all the flames get turned off, and you just have to start everything from scratch. So the flames remain on, that means I've gotten the right statue. Unfortunately, I haven't really found a solid way to actually find a solution. It's really just been trial and error. Which is also why I went through all that trouble cutting down the vines and making sure that nothing was interfering. Because I don't want anything in the way while I'm finding the right order. That guy on... that charging plant on its own is already a problem. Really don't want to deal with it. Oh jeez. So as you can as you can see, that's kind of why you you want to get this stuff like this out of the way. Oh jeez. You do want to be somewhat quick because you don't want to have to deal with this guy longer than you need to. Fortunately, this isn't the worst situation I've had to pull myself out of. The dodge button is a very useful button. Never leave home without it. So that's all four statues lit. That lowers that gate. I'm not going to do anything significant with it too much just yet. But I am going to duck into this shed because that's a save point. If this was assisted, this would have been my best friend or casual, but unfortunately, because I would get accusations of going too easy, I have to just stick to apples. Now, be careful when you leave. Don't worry too much about him. This is the biggest worry. Uh, Jester-like enemy is going to appear. Uh, on its own, it's not a really a big deal, but it can be very annoying with the knife, the knife that it throws. And dodging them with other enemies is really annoying. That's why, again, why I try to take care of them as much as I can. You can deal with this jester if you like or not. Not poor. I'm just gonna... and you might see these geisha looking enemies. They're not that dangerous in a sense, but they will throw bombs at you if they recognize you and they think you're getting too close like so they're not particularly dangerous and they're easy to dodge the biggest problem is that they can constrain your movement and they tend to get a little crazy with them fortunately in this room there is a figurine that brings us to 12. get another apple because i am dire need of fruit. I am actually going to take them out with guns. I don't care how much of a scrub move that is. They are really annoying and more enemies will spawn here. It just becomes a problem. Some skid marks on that rock. I'll push it out. Also, a diary entry in this room. These 
really important that you keep picking these up because you do one of the worst situations to be in is when you're just about to beat the game you've run past a lot of enemies because you didn't think you'd have to revisit an area and then you realize you don't have enough diary pages and the game prevents you from completing it and the reason i went into this room was just to collect the goodies i can't do anything about it yet i would need a key for a sword and i can't progress but getting past the garden is a significant achievement and now that I'm on the other side of this gate, I can open it and run on through. I'm going to enter another garden. Some people might have noticed that I don't actually need to equip the knife to use it. But it's just easier for me if I remember that it's equipped, that I have it equipped. Now this garden is actually very easy to speed through. Because you don't actually... There's not much importance to the story here other than items, goodies, and a few figurines, and a figurine. But just for walkthrough's sake, I am just going to take care of some of the enemies here. Because the right side of this garden has a few goodies and a figurine. That brings us to 13. And if I don't have to fight that enemy, I won't. forward requires me to get up to that window. And the way to do so is with the grappling hook that we found on the first floor earlier. Ta-da. We've made it through. Get some books on the right-hand side. Now, unfortunately, that's the stairway that was destroyed earlier. Thankfully, Another diary page. I'm just going to explore this floor a little bit more. In this room is a squared piece. Now this might look somewhat familiar, but I'll point out where the actual puzzle is. That was another cutscene. Spawns a doll. That 
was me nearly making a silly mistake right there. Fortunately, this top, the upper right part is a door I can unlock that brings me back to the entrance hall. That prevents me from having to go out through the garden again and go up the grappling hook. Though in some cases, that could be a safer option, but not now. With that square piece, I'm going to go back to the student residence hall. Notice it's much easier now that I don't have enemies to deal with. And I'm going to go back to where I found the boy. Now enemies have come back in here. Gotta be careful, especially because there's, about, there's four enemies. There's two shadows and two one-winged enemies. One-eyed enemy. And being out of stamina is a very bad move. Now I'm actually going to start this puzzle first so you can see what I'm talking about. So this this is this is missing a ceramic piece, which is the squared piece we found earlier. Now you need to get a certain pattern by rotating these blocks. The pattern, and you probably already saw it, but I'm going to leave the room to refresh it. This pattern is actually etched on the ground that I, on the tiles that I'm walking over right now. And that solution is what you're going to have to input. Now, you can always do the same. Sorry, I was just taking a fit photo as, as I've mentioned earlier. You can always just start the puzzle, leave the puzzle, check the solution again, but that can be a bit annoying. It's a lot faster to have your own, uh, another image by your side, ready to go. Again, your solution is going to look a little different because the solutions are inherently randomized. Once you get it, I've got the key of cups, which is just one of the many keys on this floor, in this game. Now, one of the reasons it's smart to try and open doors you can't, you couldn't previously open. It's just it brings up the visual indicator. For example, this door you can't open just yet. I need a club key, but then it'll give me the club symbol so that if I ever go back and wonder what I need the key for, symbol will appear. This room doesn't have anything, but just a few goodies. And a grate. I can't go through there right now. That'll be for another time. Fortunately, this game doesn't like to clog your inventory too much, and this is a great example. This is the last key that needs the coin key. Last door that needs the coin key, sorry. And you can see that it's now gone from my inventory. This is a great way to just to check to see if you've used all the item, the open all the doors that need the uh, a specific key. Because if it's not gone, then you still haven't opened a door yet. And that's a bad bad thing because you need to use all the keys in order to get 
of the figurines. Now, this room is filled with maids. And I'm not going to fight any of them. Because all I need are the diary page, which you can see on the left. And the figurine. Which I'm coming up on right now, and I'm hoping the maid is not... Oh, the maid is in the way. There's also a first aid kit in the boxes opposite the maid. Uh, the figurine, sorry. There's four, that's 14. Grab that first aid kit. Grab that diary entry. And I'm gonna get out. That's all I need from this room, and I'll never have to go back here again. Now that I've got the Key of Cups, that opens up more areas I can access. I'm just going to go back to the second floor on the right side. Look for this door. Ta-da. There are slimes in here. Slimes are actually a very unique enemy in that hitting them with other types of ammunition is very difficult. You, they're best, the best way to take care of them, with a knife. Now that chest is a mimic, but I'm not going to take care of any of these enemies right now. Because there's a boss fight coming up. So these, those black sparkles, or floaty sparkle things, uh, they indicate that there's a boss coming up. If I take this key and inspect it, I'm going to start the fight. So if you're not ready, go out, save, heal up, whatever you need. So that'll get me the key of swords, but I don't get to enjoy that. Because... It's a boss fight. Okay, now this boss is a bit tricky. Because I've got it in a bad position. So the boss has a barrier which you cannot break, and the boss is invulnerable while it's up. As you just saw. But every time that barrier is up, there will be three purple orbs that are scattered around the battlefield. Gosh. And the boss can teleport to try and hit you with flame or with, with a wall line of fire. Oh, Really convenient to you. You can break the orbs with your knife, but if your if range is important to you, got a, a pistol will do in this situation. Ah, as well. Every now and then, the boss will resummon these orbs. Break, barrier lowers, and you fight. Now you can use your knife against this boss, but I highly, I would highly recommend against it. Right, I am actually going to use an apple. Now after the boss gets down to a certain level of health, they'll start summoning skulls. In addition to the enemies that they summon now. The skulls are actually not that scary. Ow. And they can be dispelled by a knife. I'm just gonna try to bait the boss. Go away, go 
away, go away, go away. These, uh, these, those orbs actually track your last position. And they're actually more powerful than the plate than the flames that the boss throws at you. Eventually, the boss gets defeated. I'm gonna skip that cutscene. Yeah, the typical strategies for the boss are just to keep your distance, break the purple orbs, uh, use your gun in that instance, and keep attacking until the boss runs out of health. You'll notice that all the enemies are gone. I, they will come back if I re-enter this room, but thankfully, I don't, I don't need to come back here ever. I've already got the Key of Swords. That was the thing I needed. Thankfully, that means going to the other rooms significantly easier. So, there's another room that needs the Sword Key immediately. I'm going to use that. I won't be able to do anything significant in there right now, but I'm just going in there just to make things easier on myself. There's going to be more enemies in this room later, that's why I'm just taking care of these now. S some players who've played the game before might think this is just a waste of ammunition. They're probably right. But I'm not caring right now. now if you inspect this part of the shelf, you will get a bit more ammunition. Right now, in this room... I need an old video player, and I need an old VHS tape to be more accurate, and something's going to play on this television. I clearly don't have a, a videotape, so that's not relevant to me right now, but I'll remember that in the future. box. Now notice that because enemies have reappeared on this floor, it means that there's something I can really I can do here that's important. visiting this room. I'm just gonna take care of them now. So that door needed the key of cups to unlock. The one that's next to the soldier. Thankfully there's not much I need in this room. There's just a few goodies. Uh, one jester enemy, but I don't have to fight him. It. Bolts. And another slide for the projector. Thankfully, that's it. Just go get in and out. This room, in between the two statues, I need a sword. This room's a bit more significant. There's a diary entry here, first and foremost.
Now, normally I would tell you to ignore that chest because it's a mimic, but if you can see, there's a blue glint. That means this is a real chest, which contains a shotgun. But the most important item in this room wasn't the shotgun. It's the unicorn head. Now, Jester will appear, but I don't need to fight it. I can just leave. Now, if you remember, there was a unicorn. Um, a unicorn that was missing its head on the first floor. This is one of the reasons why clearing the enemies out of a room is really helpful. I don't have to deal with them, and I can just run over. If you haven't already, move this shelf out of the way and enter this room. So this will open a door, and that's very important. But this will summon two... I'll call them fire spirits. They're easy enough to dodge, but you just have to provoke them to launch their attack. Uh, the noise is just coming from a boy. And I only showed you that just so that, in case you found it particularly creepy, you didn't think that it was just some spirit or some jump scare. Which, there are surprisingly few in this game. Now, this portrait is an item that I'll need, but once I get it, an enemy's gonna smash through the window, or break through the window, I should say. Once I get it. Oh gosh, it's a knife wielding maid. Dodge. Thankfully, I'm never coming back here, so I don't need to fight. And these flame spirits are powerful, but they're easy to trick. You just have to cross their path, and then they'll launch a stream of fire. And that makes them vulnerable. Jester appears, but I actually don't care. Now, if you remember, um, there was a room with portraits earlier on the second floor, which was this one. So the jester is just be careful with the knives. And this starts another puzzle. Unfortunately, it's not very clear unless you've seen the statue. Which it says, a plaque on the pedestal with a quote that reads, it all began in youth. What that means is, each of these paintings has an age. And you need to find, press the buttons in the order from youngest to oldest. Now, unfortunately... And as before, the solution, the puzzles change every time, so there's never going to be the same pictures, or years, or even combinations as what you see here right now. So you're going to have to do your own math. Uh, I have a calculator with me, so this lady is 37. This lady is 39. Lady's 36. Thirty-five. Thirty-eight. So what the correct answer would be 35, 36, 37, uh, 38, 39. If you get it. The statue's item will now become obtainable. It's a bunch of fuses. This will make sense a bit later. Totally dodge. Oh. Ow. Nah, I, I, I admit, I'm making a lot of silly mistakes. I don't care. This is just to show you that I am a regular human being, and that even though I've played this game multiple times, I still get hurt. Now, 
don't be surprised if you see the boy here. According to, uh, as the cutscene went, you brought him back here. I've actually just gotten ahead of myself. There's one more item I need to get now that I can. I have the key of swords. This is just to prevent backtracking. Too much. You all have no choice but to backtrack through this game. Locked by the key of swords. There's another figurine here. Which brings us to 15. Such as waste paper basket. Crossbow bolts. Now there are two knife wielding maids, and it's a bit hard to move around with these two, but I'm gonna give it a try. So in the first one. Ow. I've made. So I'm gonna grab this diary entry. Some shotgun shells. Apple, which I'm definitely gonna need. Now be careful because smashing open that crate gives you a tonic. Helpful, but the item I really want, that's this extinguisher. this and get out. That wasn't too bad. Now you want to be careful because that once you've com completed the room by getting the diary entry and the fire extinguisher, a maid is going to appear. And unfortunately, you're going to have to do battle with her in a narrow corridor, which is not great. Take her out with a gun. Now that I've got the fuses and the empty fire extinguisher, this is going to make a little bit more sense now. I promise. Previously, we couldn't get here without the Key of Swords. Now we can. Ow. If I try to open the doors, there's no power, there's no electrical current. And that's important because that's why we went to get the fuse. There's a couple more enemies here, but there's a tonic here. There's a need. Highly recommend you defeat these enemies, it's just going to make things a lot easier because you will come back here more than once. another figurine that brings our total to 16. Right. Some shotgun shells. 
Now, as you can tell, there's nothing in this... Everything in this area needs power. And no, there is none of that here. Without the fuses, I can't restore power. That's why I had to go get those fuses earlier. This is the room where I can resupply power. Slimes are a very annoying enemy. But they're remarkably simple to deal with as long as you have a good grasp on how to use the knife. Better have a good grasp on the knife because that's the only way you're going to touch them, other than somehow getting lucky. Ow. And this, is, this is one of the reasons why you want to get them out of the way. See the skid marks on this little box that reveals a figurine. Oops. That brings us to 17. Grab this first kit. the power generator we need to supply power to all the locks and the doors but it has no fuses that's why we did the portrait puzzle earlier now unfortunately there's a puzzle to solve and there's good news and bad news the good news is that this is actually a relatively simple puzzle just try and get as many of these red numbers to turn green as possible uh, as you can or get all six to be green. Uh, the bad news is, is that there's no real... Uh, the, all the numbers are different every playthrough, so there's no point memorizing a specific solution. And the numbers required aren't always the same, which often means you're just fiddling with the numbers to see what's right and what's wrong. Be careful of these floors, because now that you've bought power back, actually, we'll get a crossbow ready. Uh, the tile, these grates can these floor grates can get electrified, and they will deal a decent amount of damage. The reason why I'm taking out these flame spirits, normally I wouldn't, and just run past, but. It can be a bit of a pain for this for the floor. Eight, two, three, and now I can just take my time. I don't have to do this right now, but again, it just makes things easier down the line. I can just go in here and clear slime from these rooms. I will have to come back to these rooms later in the game. They're essential for some of the puzzles. But for the time being, don't have to worry about them. I just have to clear the slimes. Just a note, I am doing this a no-save playthrough, but if you're ever going to do any of those runs, it's highly recommended you do any of your no-healing items, uh, no-saves, 
safe runs on casual or assisted, just because the healing from the safe points doesn't count towards <clears throat> doesn't count count against you in those game in those uh, achievements. Sorry, I'm just making a diary page that brings us to eight. I see some skid marks, so I'm gonna move this cone, move this box, reveal some crossbow bolts. Slimes. Now you can see a diary entry and a key <coughs> on the other side. Uh, we can't get there right now. We need wires and there's a bunch of steam. We're gonna have to come back here later, but again, backtracking is just the name of the game and it makes things a lot easier if we just kill all the slimes. got ahead of myself. So we have an empty fire extinguisher and we need to fill it up. There's a lot of flame spirits, but I don't need to fight any of them. I just need to get clear. So this is a machine that would re re recharge fire extinguishers. If I hadn't restored the power, it'd be off. But now that I have, I can put my fire extinguisher in here. And it's refilled. And now I have to get past that. Now, some particularly uh, perceptive players might note that I'm leaving the loot on the other side. It's just not worth it right now. I would you I would typically have to take out those flame spirits, then grab the loot, and that's just kind of putting the cart before the horse. In my view, other other players might just call me a scrub and say you can walk, walk your way through. I am I'm just not gonna do it right now. Now that I have a fire extinguisher, that fire that we saw earlier can be put out now. But as you might expect, be careful because whenever you get close, enemies reappear. Fire extinguisher to put out the fire so I can get through the door. Now, if you've ever been in a horror game before, you know that these dolls are just going to come out and fight. But I don't have to fight any of them. Now, this girl trapped in a mirror is the second boss fight. But, well, if I trigger that, I don't have to fight all those dolls. I'll just grab this key, which is the key of clubs, which is a very important key, but not, not right now. And then I'll try to save this girl in the mirror. But that starts boss fight number two. It's 
boss is a bit different. Because there are three mirrors that they'll summon. One of these mirrors has a purple gem. That's your only chance of putting the boss. Pink gem, sorry, not purple. Ow. And hitting that pink gem is like hitting the boss's heart. That's how you damage it. The boss is impervious to damage otherwise. You can fight this boss with nothing but your knife. I think that's going to take a little bit too long. I'm going to use the crossbow. Crossbow fires three bolts at a time. That just deals a lot more damage and gets things through done a lot faster. The pink gem can only take so much damage every time. So there's no point getting a really fast weapon like the pistol. I found the crossbow to be more efficient, personally. But whatever floats your boat. After the boss loses a bit of health, you'll see they'll summon these uh, jellyfish. Ow. Jellyfish-like creatures. They, they can damage you if they hit you, but they're not very fast. You can destroy them with a knife. And they usually won't pose much of a problem if you know what you're doing. As the boss gets weaker, they'll start summoning spears from the water. Watch the ripples, and you'll avoid the spears. But they it happens quite quickly, so you'll have to pay attention. Ow. That was just one example of, again, me not taking my time. Maximum effectiveness with the crossbow. Get close to the gem. It fires three bolts in an arc. And when you're up close and personal, you get all six bolts hitting that gem. That's just more damage. And that is boss fight number two. Now we've saved that girl, and I no longer need to go into the room with all the dolls because I've just taken everything that I need. Now, just to get a few other items. So, now that we've got the key of clubs, I can, that's all the doors in the game that I can now unlock. So I'm just going to unlock this because I'm going to need this for a future puzzle. Now this room is going to be a favorite for most players. Not only because there's a first aid kit here, but this is one of the game's few genuine chests. Yeah, you can probably <laughs> anticipate what's coming. It's a machine gun. Now machine gun ammunition will start appearing in these rooms. And it's a pretty nice weapon. Now, I need to get past this chest because it's a mimic. I'll let it roll around a little bit more. Dodge these knives. Don't want to use ammunition on it. It's got to chase me. There we go. So, I'm going to view this. Now, everyone's numbers are going to be different. So, I can't help but notice that. Remarkably similar to my playthrough in the uh, no commentary version, but whatever. Oh, jeez. Okay. 
now that I have an additional slide here and I gotta clear a picture I just need one more slide to complete it otherwise it makes no sense right now in this hall. I really don't want to see you. Because enemies are reappearing, it's even more important than ever to take your time. Now, previously, I couldn't get into this room, and you notice I ignored it earlier. That's because I couldn't unlock it without the key of clubs. Now, I'm going to have to be a bit careful in this room because there's a lot of maids here. But this also room is also really good because there's quite a lot of ammunition. Bullets. Push the statue. Get an apple. Ammunition. Dodge, dodge, dodge out of the way. Break the street. Okay. Now, I needed to get here to get a small key. But once I do, oh gosh, more maids. But, she unlocks a figurine. I'm probably going to get hurt. I didn't get hurt. Wow, that was amazing. So that brings us to 18 figurines. Now, if you were... I, I didn't go over this earlier, but in one of the rooms back where the power generator was is a drawer that needs a small key. Oh, ow. Fire spits will appear. But I don't need to fight them. Because the enemies with the bombs are gone, I don't need to fight these fire spirits. But I will need to get rid of these. And there's going to be a particularly troubling enemy here. And that's that uh, lady that you can see up in that corner. She just spits out a lot of bats. It's not really a big problem, but it makes a gun like a pistol very bad for taking her down. But I don't have to fight her just yet. So you can see right there. There's a jack in the box. I don't want you. So in this room, there's a drawer that needed a small key. That gets us a VHS tape. And if you remember, we had a, v uh, a video player back in the house. Let me see if I can dodge this one. Bombs, but I just need to pass. Perfect. There will be a lady that can spew bats. 
I am going to take her out because it's going to be a big pain otherwise. As long as you can get her before the bats come out. And hit her with the full force of the crossbow. I won't have anything else to worry about. So now that I've put the video player, the VHS, VHS tape in, inspect the television, and I'll see a bunch of letters. Gosh, this is remarkably similar. Okay. So I've got that down in the notebook, and it's really important that you get it down in the notebook, because the order will actually change until you finalized it in the notebook. I'll show you what that means later. Right now, I won't have to come back here. And I'll just avoid the bombs. Okay. Got a pistol ready. Because once I go through this door, there's going to be a knife wielding maid. Spoilers. This door previously couldn't get in unless I had a club, key of clubs, but I do. Now there's gonna be one uh, bomb swing enemy. Gonna take take them out. And you can see the skid marks on this table, so I'm going to push it. Get more machine gun ammunition. Machine gun. This chest that needs a four letter password. <clears throat> this four letter password is consists of these four letters. So Y, F, L, and a W. Now, if you're coming here for my no commentary walkthrough, you might wonder why it was so important because I already knew that it was an L, Y, F, and a W. Uh, number one, no, I didn't. Those These letters can change and your letter combination can be different from mine. Two, the order of these letters can also be different. And the answer to that chest can be, isn't necessarily YFWL. It can be FWLY or LWLYF or LYFW. Some combination of that. It's one of those four, and you'll never know which one it is until you actually test it. Y F W So just to, just to show that Y F W L didn't work despite that being the first combination. It could be F W L Y No. So could it be... You're just going to have to experiment with one of those four combinations. Uh, it's W-L-Y-F. That gets me a huge gem. That will be important later. Or right now, actually. Now, an enemy is going to break through the window. Oh. Which 
she's one of those bat spewing people. I'm gonna get rid of her just because of how inconvenient it is to have her and then deal with the puzzle. Pick up some good bullets. And I'm gonna pick up a diary entry. So that's nine out of nine diary entries and 18 figurines. Now there's a bear. That needs something that can fit in in the hole. I'm gonna put in the gem. Now I'm gonna look at this electronic safe. Now the safe needs seven numbers. If you can see these seven lights to the right. And those seven numbers came from the calendar that we inspected in the same room that we found the machine gun. The order goes from left to right, not top down, as one might assume. So it goes from the L to the M, M, G, V, S, D. Now, for some reason, this is exactly the same as it was in the no commentary walkthrough, which means that the combination is a 17, 18, 12, 20, 14, 15, and 30. I'll just put in 17. And again, if you ever forget, go back. It'll keep your progress. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, what if I forgot a number? And if you ever put in a number wrong, you can always go back with the cross mark, with, with, the, with the X. Fortunately, I can use this in the same area as well. I just didn't earlier. There's this room that you can only unlock with the cup key. Normally it has a few enemies and a couple goodies, but as you can tell, there's gonna be a boss fight. Diary entry. Now, normally you can't play the piano, but with the musical score, yes, I can. I'm gonna skip the scene and jump straight to the third boss fight. Now, this boss fight can be really easy or really hard depending on your luck. So, the boss will always split into four images there's one real copy and three fakes. The only way to damage the boss is to hit the face. This can be done with only the knife if you're particularly skilled. Uh, this is what ha If you're hitting the real copy, it'll just be a blue deflection sound. Ironically, the copies are the ones that are going to hit you. The real boss doesn't do anything right now. And when they do shoot those orbs at you, you can use your knife to smack them away. We, I do not have time for this. Oops. Ow. This game is very much a uh, no, take your time and don't rush. You can get through with just the knife, but the butt butt. Guns like the shotgun or the pistol will just make things remarkably simple. No. After the boss gets down to about a third of their health, they'll summon ballet, uh, ballerina dancers. But just like the uh, squid enemies from before, they don't really. Uh oh, I'm real. I'm gonna take a tonic. I'm really taking damage. They're actually pretty harmless. You can break them if you'd like with a knife. 
but it's, it's really not worth your time. Wow, I am terrible at this. Did I mention I'm not very good at this? At the shooting part of this? That's why getting through the game with a knife has been... Very fun for me. Uh, as the boss gets weaker, you've, probably, you've already seen it. They'll summon a circle of knives as their offensive move. Just keep hitting the copies over and over again. might notice I'm being very liberal in my use of healing items. This is actually one of the... Uh, I actually know what's coming up next, so I ow, don't really need as many. But I am being more careless in this playthrough than I have been in others. Like, if I was this, if I was this careless in a hardcore playthrough, I would probably be... That would have been it, really. And we get a kitchen key. I didn't open it before, but oh, way back in the student. In the student resident building, there was a kitchen. But we couldn't get there because we didn't have the kitchen key. Screwdriver. Which, as you may remember, is going to be very. 
very handy for the room with the cops on the same area. But if you need more ammunition, this room doesn't have anything important. But I can you go inside and find some bullets. Fortunately, this area is pretty straightforward. I don't have to worry too much about getting lost or missing anything in particular. Normally, it would look like you're stuck. Just use the interact key to just push a crate. Fun fact, if you push a crate towards a slime, it'll it act as an instant kill. Saves a lot of time, effort, and being disappointed. Now watch your crate movement here, this section, primarily because it is actually very easy to stuff up and lock yourself out by accident. Now, I'll grab this figurine right here. And I should have 19 at this point, it's very important. I know I said there were 20, but the last figurine is in the final area of the game. Make sure you have just 19, so I don't ha you don't have to worry about it. There's also an axe. That's the most important item of this area. I don't actually need to fight you. So I won't. Ow. Okay, that was a bit of a stupid mistake. To know if you're on the right track, you should have 11 diary pages and 19 figurines. The last diary entry was way back in the power generator area that was blocked off by steam. You need all 12 of those to proceed. If you're missing one, the game will say, oh, I need all 12 before I can, I can solve the entire problem. And now, don't leave this room before searching this pig. That'll be the final slide. I did, and in the non -com in the no commentary walkthrough, and that was just a bit of a pain to resolve. Ow! I probably should have been smarter. So that get me out of here. Now with the axe, I need to go back to the hospital room that was just to the southeast. I don't want to fall out. No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run past. And this is gonna put another bat lady, but I can just run past her. Smash these wooden planks with the axe run straight through. There are no enemies in this room. Take a break. Resupply. Let's see what our first
first aid kit. Now, this puzzle is actually a little bit uh, random, and that I just have to get the red line to the arrow. There are many answers to this puzzle. All the buttons just have different lengths. So this cable is going to be the wire, it will take the place of the wires that will allow us to get to the final diary entry. That could have ended poorly, but it didn't. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow that. And just as to say that we're getting to the final leg of the game, enemies have started appearing everywhere. But I'm not coming back here, so I can just safely ignore them. But to make things a bit easier... I know I took the long way around, but I just couldn't be bothered. Now the moment you get the third slide and you walk into the projector room, there used to be no enemies, but there will be two flame spirits. I don't have to fight them, I can just put a slide. And then I'll get this image. Doesn't mean anything right away. But it is it is very important that I have that image, which will be in my notebook. It's very important I have this image because I can't solve the final puzzle of the game without it. So there are a bunch of squares here, and you need to find out which ones you need to press. It's not very obvious on this grid, and you aren't told, and there are no hints, apart from just being able to turn them on and off. That's where the image of the notebook comes in. All the completed squares are the buttons you need to press. Anything that's blank or incomplete is a square you can leave alone. I don't know why this is remarkably similar to that of the... Uh, no commentary walkthrough, because normally it's completely different. Just like before, there's no real time limit on this. So if you ever wonder if you've gotten it right, you can always just leave the puzzle and look at the notebook again. If you've got the right answer, you'll see the blue light. The steam will disappear, and that leads us to the final diary entry. And don't forget this key too. It looks very useless, but it's actually the key to the final area. Two bat ladies on this floor. 
Thankfully, the shotgun is very effective at putting both of them out. Ow. Now, unfortunately, the image doesn't match the key, but I promise you, the ornamental key is what gets you through. So just before we go through, I'll get the last apple. And if you've forgotten anything, this isn't a point of no return. You can still leave and go back and save. The point of no return, however, happens if you go too far. Up. Now this... is the final figurine of the game. So we have 12 diary pages and 20 figurines. You won't get the achievement for the figurines just yet. That only happens once you've beaten the game. Now, this is the final boss, spoilers. So there's no point hoarding any more healing items or saving ammunition because you don't need to. Once you approach that giant black ball at the top of the screen, that's the point of no return. So get any last minute healing items if you've forgotten any figurines or you left some ammunition running around. Uh, unfortunately, the game's toughest enemies have just now started appearing all over the area. So hopefully you didn't leave anything behind, but this is your last chance to pick up anything you've missed. If not... And then you'll end up... This is the final area. This is technically the boss arena, but there's a save point here just in case you're playing on hardcore and you want to experiment with some strategies. I'm not going to do that today. So that'll just seal you off, but I'm I've got I'm in no danger of losing this battle. I hope. I'll just skip that. So this is the final boss. It'll throw fire at you, but not close to itself, which coincidentally is the safest place to be. This makes the shotgun a very useful weapon here. Because those flames will never touch itself. Also throw these black, uh, purple uh, holes on the ground that could damage you. But again, as long as you stick close to the boss, this will almost be this would be almost a non-issue. As the boss gets weaker, they'll throw rocks at you. The rocks serve two purposes. They'll actually have they're actually a very good defense and offensive weapon. Be careful and be mindful of the rocks. They are very powerful and very damaging. Now there is a round two. And now I'm going to switch to the machine gun because it's a better weapon for this. Try to stay between in the space between those orbs. And if you're running low, always remember dodging is a priority. Damage comes later. Especially when it comes to attacks like that. The reason why I've switched to the machine gun, even though the shotgun is still really good, is when the boss tries to fly at you, ow, using your machine gun can buy you enough time to get away. But honestly, the shotgun is probably one of the most effective weapons. And that's the final boss fight. There's no benefit to getting any of the 20 figurines for the ending, but you needed all 12 diary pages just to proceed. So I'm just going to...
going to skip past because that's not relevant. And that is Evil Tonight. Uh, now, thank you to everyone who has listened thus far. I know I talked a lot in this game. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please do subscribe. Once you get to the results screen, just before a parting note, this is where all the achievements will start coming in. Uh, if, especially if you haven't died, you haven't saved, uh, you've got all 20 figurines, the difficulty, so on and so forth. Uh, I took a lot of time because I was experimenting and just killing enemies, but if you want to get the challenge for the... Uh, to get the a time rank of an A, you need to complete the game in under an hour. But... I'm gonna, that's for another time. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe and like this video if you liked what you saw. There will be more things like this in the future, I promise. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.